Hello once again, Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Welcome to The Verdict. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. We welcome an old friend back for, how many, how many times did you say he's been on the show? Sixteen, 16. times. This is his sixteenth appearance. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And, he and, he and, is an old and friend. And we've remained on the air even in having him on sixteen times. That's even more amazing. Well, I know it. I mean, we've had him on so much we can't see him age. <laughs> he, Mike uh, McCarville will be on talking about what we have called the Republican Tsunami. Yeah, it was uh, it's quite a day on election day. Mike will be here to kind of sum it all up for us. It's coming up on The Verdict. The idea of sending American money out of our own economy these days for foreign oil is madness. Yet we're spending $25 billion a month on foreign oil. America's 100-year supply of natural gas can break this pattern and strengthen our economy. See how it can create jobs, generate clean electricity, fuel our cars, and protect our environment at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. I really think almost we ought to let Mike introduce us because he's been on enough and, uh, and he's our most frequent guest this is his 16th appearance. Mike McCarville, former uh, news director, KTOK, talk show host, uh, creator and uh, editor, publisher, uh, generator of the McCarville Report, one of the sponsors on our show and one of the things that I read every day. Uh, he is also, I've, I have dubbed him, Mr. Uh, Oklahoma Political Insider because he knows more about what's going on than anybody and we're pleased he'd give us the time to talk about what happened at our most recent general election, but welcome. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Now, now, when number 17 rolls around, do I have, do I have to keep paying you to come on the show? <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will, you, will you let me off the hook on that one? Maybe. We'll, maybe. Give, we'll give you a discount. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. My wife keeps asking me, Lee. Well, they let you uh, start doing that every week. And I said, why, honey? And she said, well, that's the only time you ever shave is when you have to do that show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, it, elections ha hadn't been over that long. Wow. And, and you yeah, know, for, right. for months, uh, you know, uh, people in both parties have been saying, well, a, a best case scenario for us is this, and a worst case scenario for us is this. And in retrospect, it, the Republicans had to look at this and say, man, this was about a best case scenario. They, right. they won just about everything they thought they might. Nationally, all the way down to the state of Oklahoma, Mick, I cannot imagine it being much better for the Republican Party. I mean, look at just the state of Oklahoma. Look at yeah. it. Every statewide office. That's, that's an amazing uh, right there. Picked up, uh, what, eight uh, seats in the state house, six in the state senate, uh, now control the entire legislature and the governor's office. Every major state office in this state are now in the hands of Republicans. Historic, yeah. clearly historic. So in general, what, what does that mean? Does, does the Democratic Party need to move further to the right, further than they already are, to, to become competitive two years from now? I think there's a couple of things it means. First of all, the imprimatur 
uh, that uh, the Republicans now have from the voting public. As our friend Representative uh, David Dank from yeah. Oklahoma City has said, uh, we got the vote, now we better deliver on what we mm -hmm. promised. And they better not mess up or they'll be in deep trouble right. two years from now. Uh, and now, the Democratic Party, the, the, the party apparatus itself in Oklahoma has been out of step with Democratic voters for a long time. Right. The, the party apparatus is run by liberals. And the average Democrat in this state, obviously, is not a liberal. He's conservative. That's right. And that showed particularly in these uh, legislative races this time around where, uh, and again, this is the first time I've ever seen in my lifetime, and I've gone back and looked at a bunch of other races, this, these election campaigns were nationalized all the way down mm -hmm. to the local level, right? Uh, to the state houses, for crying out loud. If, if, you, if you were a Democrat and you didn't come out swinging at Barack Obama, you were toast, and that's pretty well the way it turned out. And two years from now, the president will be on the ballot, presumably. Uh, and yeah, so presumably. You, would, you would think that the president's popularity is going to reflect how the Democratic Party is able to kind of regroup and try to, to resurrect itself around here. Well, one would think so. But, uh, you know, two, two years, as, as we've seen between uh, the 20, uh, uh, 2008 election year and this election cycle, mm -hmm. two years can mean a whole lot. Oh, well, sure can. Uh, who, who would have thought two years ago that we well, would be at this point talking about a Republican sweep of the entire nation? Well, you know what it, what it reminds me of is in 06, it almost as if the, the, the Oklahoma kind of moved toward the center. A little bit, yes. Yeah, uh -huh, in, yeah. in November. And then in 08, with Barack Obama's the popularity, and of course here we were the reddest state Swung in the country. to the right of center. Swung yes. to the right, and then went mm -hmm. to, to the right again. It almost looks to me as if 06 was the aberration. Well, it, it could have been. Uh, but in terms of the, the historic import, mm -hmm. this election, I think, is, is the big one. I think it's the one that we'll all be talking The historians will be writing about and talking about for a long time. Right. Well, I mean, th think, think of the magnitude of this. Nationwide, Republicans gained in state houses, state senates, legislatures overall, 658 seats. That's phenomenal. It never happened before in the history of the country. Yeah, that, I mean, 658. That's over 10 yes, it's phenomenal. Per state. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is, if you consider the average would be zero. I that's mean, that's if, correct. If you had a that's true right. two-party system. That, that's right. It, it, happened, it happened all over well, the country. that is amazing. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Either in Oklahoma or nationally, let's say this election hit in 2010 at a time when employment was high, the economy was good, jobs were uh, plentiful. Uh, would we have seen the same result? No, I think it would have been totally different. If uh, I think uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Barack Obama and his programs and policies are now being blamed by a lot of people for what's going on in the country. Again, as I say with every president who, who gets labeled, rightly or wrongly. I mean, it may for be sure. right that he's being blamed, maybe wrong that he's being blamed. But that's, the perception is that he's the guy in charge, and mm -hmm. he's the one who's made the mistakes that have got us where we is now. And he, he's been his own worst enemy because he's pushed these programs. Obamacare, uh, government takeover or government bailout of big business, all these things have just got people irritated, angry, worried, concerned. Mm -hmm. And this time, they were mad enough to demonstrate their anger at the ballot box. Well, let me ask you another question, uh, related. Uh, this is not the first time we've had this. It's the first time that we've had this big a swing. But it's not the first time that midterm elections kill oh, the, the sitting president. That's true. I mean, Ronald Reagan had it. Well, Bill 90, Clinton 94, had it. 94, Bill Clinton had it, yeah. yes. Uh, and yet they both recovered Survived. to some mm -hmm. significant extent. Yes. Uh, is it reasonable to assume that Obama can recover? I, to I, I think it is reasonable to assume that, uh, but he's got to start uh, changing his tune pretty quickly. Remember uh, uh, Bill Clinton after the 94 uh, race that began the Republican tide uh, revolution, as you will recall. Uh, Clinton almost immediately started changing his tune on a lot of things yeah. and really moved to the center. Uh, and even a little bit to the right on a lot of things, and resurrected himself, literally, uh, and won re-election as a result uh, later on. And uh, Barack Obama somehow has got to do the same thing. I think Obama, I think, is a bit in a bit more of a dilemma uh, than Clinton was because Obama, his base is the liberal wing of the Democratic Party. I mean, that's his base. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he moves too far, as we found out, they start shooting at him, and they've been shooting at him uh, during this election year. Uh, criticizing him for, oh, you said you were going to do this and you didn't do it. You said you were going to do this about gays in the military. You didn't do it. You said you were going to do this. You didn't do it. You haven't done it. When are you mm -hmm. going to do it? And so he was getting hit from all sides, and he still is, and I think he's going to continue to get hit. One more historical question, then let's move to more current yep. stuff. But uh, help my memory. I don't remember. Uh, were the Republicans in control of the House and the Senate 
when at Clinton's mid-year. In other words, his last two years, did, was he a Democratic president with the Republicans in yes, control they were still in charge. of the House yes. and Senate? Yes. Yeah, still. I believe yeah, they, so. they were. Okay. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Well, Mike, what does it mean when you have eight statewide uh, elected office from one party? Uh, it, it almost sounds as if the Republicans can kind of just pull out their agenda and, and just say, this is what we're going to do and, and, and kind of count on it. Is, well, do you see it that way? Well, I, I think there are a couple of different ways to look at it, Mick. And the, the first way is that, you know, you, the way you just outlined. That is, you're in total control. And, of course, that's great in a lot of ways, but it can be dangerous in another. Yeah. Because anything that happens now, it's going to be the Republicans who are going to get blamed for it. So, I mean, you can't say, well, you can't point at the Attorney General and say, oh, he did it because he's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. He did it. You won't be able to do that because the Attorney General is going to be a Republican. Mm -hmm. Insurance commissioner is going to be a Republican. Labor commissioner, I mean, they're all Republicans. Right. So it really, it's a, it's a, for the Republicans, it's a delightful uh, uh, situation, but yeah. it's fraught with danger on down the road. Okay, well, I want to get into more about that, but first, before we go to the break, what, what about the, all the questions, all the state questions on there? Anything surprised you about the state questions? Uh, no. Well, I was surprised by the overwhelming uh, defeat of 744. I knew it was going to go down, but I mean, God, golly, what was the final, 75 or well, they got 80 percent, percent. Yeah, golly, yeah. I mean that's pretty overwhelming rejection. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't hard to get people to vote no if you. Have I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. It was a good year to have people vote no if you. All right, we'll have Mike McCarville and and uh, back on another segment here coming up after this break. We'll see you then. Most of the artwork that I produce is with colored pencil and watercolor. The subject matter that I use is, of course, Chickasaw. Most of my themes revolve around family and um, really that foundation that has been a part of Chickasaw life since ancient times. The Chickasaw Nation is a matriarchal society. You've got one lady, she's probably the oldest member of the family that everybody goes to and that everybody reveres. That is something that every woman can look forward to in the Chickasaw Nation because they are extremely important in the family. Maybe one day <laughs> I will be a matriarch. I think this is probably the secret to the success of our government is that we still have maintained that idea that family is the most important thing and that uh, we must uh, minister to the family first and then all other things will fall into place. What's your idea of security? A good paying, sustainable job, a solid economy, less dependence on foreign energy? We can achieve it with the help of one industry, American oil and natural gas. It creates energy, jobs, and a strong economic base we can rely on. New technologies open vast reserves that will supply our energy needs far into the future. Because security, by every definition, is worth protecting. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We're visiting with Mike McCarville about the recent elections, and we're talking nationally and statewide, Kent. Yeah, Mike, tell us, uh, focus on the statewide uh, offices and tell us, pick the office that was most surprising to you for whatever reason. I, I think the one that surprised me the most, the outcome, uh, Kent, uh, was uh, the race for uh, insurance commissioner, in which incumbent Democrat Kim Holland uh, was defeated by Republican John Doak. I thought Holland would pull that one out in the end. I thought it would be close. I didn't think Holland had enemies within the industry. It almost seemed as no, if the, uh, the industry her, was very only, friendly. her only problem was yeah. she had a D by her name. I mean, exactly, I, and I, I think she erred in not coming out strongly enough uh, against Barack Obama. Yeah. Again, I just can't over, overemphasize how important I think the Obama D name of candidate link was right. in this election for the Democrats. All right, now let's go to yep. uh, Dan Boren's race was uh, closer yes. than, than most people thought well, again, for the same for reason. Congressman Boren, a D, uh, it yeah. was close. He's, he's uh, won that uh, seat in the past by, what, 60, 62, 65, 66 mm -hmm. percent. Right. And this time, a no name Republican who had trouble filling out his FEC reports. Uh, ran him, held him at 58%. Yeah. And for Dan Boren, for a Democrat in that district, northeastern Oklahoma, well, all of the eastern right. half of the state, uh, the most Democratic part of the state, to get held to 58%, it 
is pretty significant. I think Boren recognized the importance of that. And you'll see some uh, redrawing of the lines, and I assume they'll try to keep that a safe Democratic seat, but well, it's getting again, harder and harder to find a that's Democratic That's right. And again, seat. Republicans, you talk about control of what's going to happen down the road. Republicans in total control of the redistricting process. But don't you Very think they'll important. try to create one safe seat for a Democrat? I mean, strategically, well, I'm not saying that's right or I wrong think it'll way be to the do second. it. I think it'll be the second. Yeah, yeah. clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. Boren must have been listening. I noticed that uh, recently when Nancy Pelosi said she wanted <laughs> to run for head of the Democratic uh, minority position, yep. uh, Boren said, I'm not going to support her. I want to tell you, I shot him an email at about 5.30 one morning, and 30 minutes later, I had a response from him. My press guy's working on it. We'll get right back to you. <laughs> and he did, and he said, I don't, in essence, I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, he, he... I don't know whether he would have done that two years ago or not. I don't, I don't know that he would have, but I tell you, he's never been a, a fan of Pelosi's, and he's certainly yeah. never been a fan of uh, Barack Obama, and I think mm -hmm. that was his saving grace. James Langford, kind of fresh political <laughs> face. Yes. And, uh, a year Mr. ago, Mr. Langford goes to Washington. <laughs> who'd have thought it six months ago? Yeah. And he, can you believe it? This guy is going to wind up, when it's all said and done, this no-name, fresh political face, I mean, never been in politics before, it may, is going to have raised and spent about $1.2 Amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still astounded. So what's I, he going to do? What, what will we associate with James Langford years from now when we look back? He's going to be another Tom Coburn, mark my words. He's going to be a no vote on spending. Will he? And I think he'll be very popular and he'll stay there as long as he wants to. Uh, it's funny, you just got elected and you start yeah, asking I know, about I know, but, uh, term limits and uh, all. Yeah. But will he self-term limit? I, I don't know. I've never asked him that question, and I don't think he's spoken to it. I know about half of those elected, and I'm reading some of the uh, national uh, uh, websites today, this morning, uh, about half of those who were elected, the new Republicans, are going to self-limit themselves yeah. to, uh, you know, six terms or 12 years or whatever. Hmm. Yep. Um, the uh, governor has a lot of appointees, uh, appointees to make. What? Oh, yes. And uh, the Republicans haven't been, you know, in charge of the governor's position in eight years. So, uh, you know, has it has has it changed since the Keating administration? Are things different now from oh, I th a I think they are. I, I, and a lot of the key positions in, in the departments controlled by Democrats. Obviously, you've got Democrats. I mean, you have attrition, in which the R's who were there have left. Mm -hmm or they were asked to leave, or they were let go. Do you think and any of them are going to stay? Any, any inside? I, there will be some who will stay, I think. And uh, I think there will be some uh, D's uh, that stay on. Uh, I mean, for example, in uh, the uh, state treasurer's office, I think Tim Allen, uh, who's uh, been in the office uh, with uh, the, the current treasurer, uh, Meacham, is going to stay on under the, with the Republican, uh, Ken Miller. And I, I think there are going to be some examples, but there's going to be a huge sea change. The, the, the payrolls involved, and you just this just give you an idea of what's involved here. When you when you change this many offices, sixty nine million dollars in payroll annually, annually, hmm. wow, is what's at stake here with 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 the eight uh, top offices in the state of Oklahoma. Well, maybe it's, it's amazing. Maybe it's because I practice law, but one uh, the offices I'm interested in watching see what happens is in the attorney general's office. Sure, because for as many years as most of us can remember. Uh, we've been a, been, a, been a Democrat, and we've had a lot of assistant AGs. They have 57, 58, 60, something like that positions there. Mm, yes. They all serve at the Huge pleasure. Huge department. And it would be interesting to see whether they stay or go, and if they go, what, what replaces them? I'm not, I don't know that there will be a wholesale uh, change over there, but I think over time you'll see a lot of changes. Quite all right, who's going to be Secretary of State? I don't know. If you know, give well, me a Well, now, wait week. a minute. When you know, come back on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it is that time, isn't it? I mean, the appointments are going to start flying yeah. well, what, here before long. Well, what, you know, the Secretary of State's kind of an interesting role because there's a lot sure. of different ways yep. you can go with it. Do you think that Governor Fallon will fall more in line with the way Keating ran his office, or do you think it'll be more in line with the way Henry ran his office as far as those types of appointments? I think it'll be the way Mary Fallon wants to run her office, mm -hmm. and I think it'll be somewhere in between what you've just uh, described, uh, mm -hmm. Mick. Uh, she's uh, got a pretty firm mind, uh, and I, th I think she'll uh, I think she'll run a pretty tight ship. And I think uh, we'll probably all of us will probably be surprised by some of the appointments, some of the selections she makes. Uh, I don't think she's there, she's not going to go looking for doctrinaire Republicans necessarily up and down the line. Obviously, there'll be a lot of them. Sure, but I think she'll bring in some Democrats. Let me ask you about best and worst in political ads, local, or I mean statewide. What's the what was the most impressive? Political ad that you saw for which candidate? Uh, that, who, who did the best on political advertising? I thought uh, Lankford's commercials overall, taken as a body, as a yes. work, mm -hmm. as a whole, were pretty doggone good. They told his story. They weren't offensive in any way. 
and if you watched them, you got a you just got a good feeling about the guy. I thought some of the worst uh, commercials, and I still don't understand why they did it, was uh, the auto turn inspectors, uh, in which he literally right out of the box went after his Republican opponent, whom he led based on all the polls by double digits at that time, and it's simply the longer. Those commercials ran, and he ran them all the way through Election Day. Mm -hmm. The longer he ran those, the lower he sank. And it just—it was amazing to me that he, that he did that. I what, don't understand it. What about the governor's race? Was the was the uh, difference surprising to you, or I, did you expect I, it to be that large? Uh, I didn't expect it to be quite as large as it was. I thought, in terms of commercials, I thought Fallon's clearly were superior uh, to those of Askins. Uh, I thought uh, Askins had a couple of good ones. I thought one that was especially effective in the primary. Was the one of which he talked about equal pay for women? Yeah, I thought it resonated with the, sure resonated with the women in my house. I'll tell you. Well, we didn't see it again. I, don't I did, did not see it in general, and I explained that to me. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I, I, if you'd asked me a week or two <coughs> out on the governor's race, I, I, I was telling people because I was getting asked. I was, I was saying it's going to tighten. Fallon's going to hold on, but it's going to tighten. And I was, I couldn't have been more wrong because it didn't tighten. Everybody, it went the other everybody way. thought it was going to tighten. It, I thought it, it was going to tighten. It expanded. It did. And it, it, see, it, what, it kind of felt though. A few days out, you kind of felt that whatever momentum Lieutenant Governor Askins had created there two weeks out yep. had not only Faded. stalled, but it was done. And and and. And Congresswoman Fallon yeah. was able to, to just. You're right. What, what happened, Mick, is what sometimes happens in elections. I've never seen it happen quite this, on this broad a scope. What happened was when Election Day came and undecided voters went into the polling place, they all broke, literally, 85% of them broke for a Republican or the Republicans. And I think that's what happened in that race. Mm -hmm. They knew both the candidates, obviously, by that time. And they just, uh, they were undecided. They walked in and said, I like you know, that one. We've had an entire show on politics. We haven't mentioned two words, Tea Party. Yes. Uh, we what? were just getting ready to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. So what, what effect did they have on, on, uh, on the elections? I, I, think they had, I think they had this effect, and I think it's a pretty profound one. Break it down local and, and national. Okay. Well, I think it works. It applies across the board, I think, okay. uh, Kent. I think the, the, the activities of the Tea Party and its members motivated a lot of the Republican base to get more involved because they said, Ooh, look at here. We're, we don't want to get outdone by these Tea Party people. But a, and a lot of them, a lot of the Tea Party activists are also Republican activists. So there was some there was some cross hatching going on there. Uh, and I think overall, uh, the impact of the Tea Party, both locally and nationally, uh, Kent, uh, was very positive. They motivated people to get involved. They motivated people to get out and vote. And uh, I think they uh, they played a pretty, played a pretty significant role in the outcome. What's the most surprising national? race or outside of Oklahoma to you? Our neighboring state to the east, Arkansas. Blanche Lincoln, U.S. Senator, 12 years. Very popular lady, uh, an attractive lady, a well-spoken, uh, very highly thought of. Had a tough primary. A tough primary. Came out of it and she gets beat, not just beat, I mean she was, she got literally run, almost run out of the state by the, by the size of the vote that Republican John Boozman got. Now John Boozman, I don't know but I have some friends in Little Rock who do know him, and they say this guy's got the personality of, of uh, drying cement. Mm. So it was all I mean, about he, Blanche Lincoln. Uh, it's man. all about Blanche yeah. Lincoln being a D, and she just, for some reason, would not come out swinging at Barack Obama, even though her own poster told her, You've got, if you want to win, you've got to take a swing at the president. She wouldn't do it, yeah. and she lost by double digits. Mike McCarville has been our guest today on The Verdict. Mike, thanks so much for coming on. My pleasure, gentlemen. We'll all see right. you soon. Yes, sir. Kent and I will have a final word right after this. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. 
Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. That's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Over time, owning your home has proved to be a good decision. And while lately the economy has presented challenges, it's also helped us focus on what matters most. Family, friendship, community, and finding a home that's right for you. No one has more experience and expertise to help you than an agent who is a Realtor. We're prepared to show you options, answer your questions, and guide you home. Every market's different. Call a Realtor today. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We're wrapping up the show with Mike McCarville, and we talked all about politics. Oh, yeah. He really knows what's going on, keeps up with it, and is a reliable source of information, and we appreciate him coming and sharing it with our viewers. His website is terrific, and if you're trying to find it, uh, we'll put the information on the screen. It's uh, tmrcom.blogspot.com. but if you'll just go to Google and put in Mike McCarville, that's probably the easiest way yeah. to find it, but a very popular website and, and maybe the best source of uh, political information inside the state of Oklahoma. A lot of stories are broken on the McCarville Report. Also, if you have an idea about a guest you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict, we'd like to hear from you. So go to our website, theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. Tell us about a guest or a subject that you'd like to see discussed. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.